Hey guys, this is Ishmael Lamte. The title of this video isn't so much a pleasant one, but I would like to share with you what really happened. So I did actually crash and lose my drone, which was about two weeks old after purchasing it. Now, how it happened was very interesting. And um, yeah, I'll actually, you know, go ahead and then share what really happened. So I did embark on a trip to see some, you know, parts of Ghana, which actually had um, some tourist sites, you know, some amazing places uh, I wanted to see. And especially being able to fly the drone because some part I uh, was going to be very difficult to actually step foot over there. So there was this um, village, um, which is located somewhere in the OT region called Kwe or Kwe. It's K U E, and um, the locals call it Kwe Kwe Kwe. So um, that place has um, a cave, which uh, also happens to be the home of the gods. Now the cave is located some you know kilometers away from the village, and to be able to get to the cave, you need to go through some you know routes. You have to actually climb to the top of the mountain, descend, you know, just to get to see the cave it's actually a tourist site over there and it's always advisable that whenever you're going there you go with a, um, a forest guard so before you actually get there you have to report to the um, you know the forest reserve um, head office then they appoint a guard to go with you so the good thing for me is I actually went through this process and i had a guard to go with me so we got there and because i told him that i had a drill with me um, he advised, if possible, let me just fly the drone to be able to see the place so we don't have to, you know, walk all the way to the cave because it was going to involve like about one and a half hours of, you know, walking or even two hours before we could get to that particular site. So I thought it was a good idea. So we arrived at where the cave um, was located. We first went to the chief's house to seek permission or to actually inform him that, you know, we want to go see the place. Hey guys, this is Ishmael Lamte, and today I'm at uh, what's the name of this place? I think it's Chabobo National Park um, the Reserve. Um, here, there's a forest reserve over here. There's a there's some couple of you know interesting places that are around that I want to go take uh, a look. So this is actually the headquarters of the place. It's actually a nice place, I must say and um we're about to you know embark on the adventure it's going to be a very tiring one i can't say from what i've said so far the map and everything but hey let's see how it's going to go I think we are currently at Kwe, which happens to be the last um, village before you head towards um, Togo. And there's a cave over here as well as um, some water, river walk, right? So, cave river walk? Uh, so it's a river walk. And as well as it's the, a walk along the river Okay. that separates Ghana from Togo. Oh, okay. So the river serves as the boundary between the two countries. Oh, I see. That's and Togo now. also have a national park. Okay. Yes, called Fazama Fakalsa National Park. Okay. Yes. So we're going this yes. way. We're going to the next house. All right. That day was a Friday, and it was very good. Also, we went to see the chief because if we didn't, you know, have, have gone to see the chief, and then we just went ahead to go to the place, we might have missed some very vital information. So, according to the chief, on Fridays, um you're not allowed to go to the cave but it's a specific friday not um every friday so he told us a bit history about that and it was very good to know so after that i went to an open field where i could fly the drone because i'm a beginner in flying drones it is always advisable to fly at a very open space so you have you know um, visuals or you know sights of the drone so i did exactly that 
and before even doing that actually they'd fly on top of the village to you know get some sort of aerial shot of the village so you actually see this on your screen <music> After doing that, um, I got some, you know, map information from the, um, that's the forest guard about how the place is and where the, the cave actually was and how I could be able to fly the drone a bit closer. Now, this is where everything began getting, you know, um, should I say, like, very interesting. Uh, let me just put it that way. So I decided to fly the drone and I was heading towards where the cave, you know, was located. Now I went a bit up, you know, it's always advisable to fly above certain altitude. So you can have, you know, clear um, view of the place you are flying at. So you, if there are some sort of obstacles, you know how best you can go about that. So I was trying to do that. And then I began going a bit forward. Now, good for me, I discovered a path which um, sort of led to the cave, but it seems the forest guard um, wasn't really so sure about that particular path, but he was directing me to where the cave was located. So he was actually looking on the screen on uh, of the, that's my phone with me. So where he was you know, pointing to the direction. So I was trying to get close to the direction. Then I bumped into a tree. It was crazy, I should say. How did this happen? Because I thought I'd gone higher enough, but unfortunately I wasn't high enough because, you know, as you're approaching the mountains, the trees, it was actually, it's a, it's a, a forest area. So the trees are a bit tall and because it's a mountains, you know, getting close to the mountain, you know, climbing to the top of the mountains, you notice that it goes higher and higher. What really happened was that and the DJI Mavic Air 2 app, um, the altitude, that's the flight altitude, was set to 30 meters. I don't know how this happened. So I was a bit surprised. Now I discovered this that was after the drone had crashed and then fallen down. So when it happened, um, I, I didn't know what to do at, at that point because I was still getting, you know, visuals that the camera of the drone was still functional, but had fallen down. So I was trying to see if I could um, fly from there using the manual way of flying. So you just uh, holding the joystick to a certain position. I tried that. I tried to move a bit, but it wasn't um, coming up. So at this point, um, we had to find a way to go locate the drone. Mind you, at this point, I had flown for about, you know, some I think kilometers away from where we were standing and um, it was a bit, you know, heading to the top of the mountain, getting close to the cave. So when this happened, uh, the guard was present with me. So he um, looked at, you know, like the footage of the last footage of the drone before it fell. The good thing about some of these drones is that Whenever you record, you have a cache version which is um, kept on your phone. So 
but in case of anything you actually have the cache version so i was fortunate to have had that on my phone we watched that and then we tried to figure out where the drone might have fallen according to him he thought i was a bit closer to the cave at that point i wasn't thinking so right so i was also thinking the same and um after that there's this feature in the dji uh, mavic uh, i think it's in, it's available in most of your drones which allows you to locate your drone so how this here's how it actually works um it gives you the last time the drone like it had connection with the drone or you flew the drone where it was or where it had fallen to and then it gives you a map to that particular place so you can you know to, um, use the route of the map to the place now the interesting thing about the map is that it shows you a straight line to the place the drone has fallen to and in the jungle in the forest there's nothing like a straight line you have to go through trees you have to go through bushes and so on so we decided to go on a rescue mission for this drone it was actually a very bad idea as a then but thinking about the investment I've made, the amount of money I'd spent purchasing a drone as of then, which um, was just two weeks old, I decided to go on this um, rescue mission with the guard. He actually gave me some sort of motivation and vim that we we're going to find this drone. So since he thought it was close to the cave, we were actually going to walk to the cave what we were trying to avoid from the very beginning so we began our trip we went on top of the mountains i went with the guard i wasn't prepared for that for this but i had to so we walked um quite you know some you know distance as well as it took us some time like about close to two hours or even more on top of the mountains and it wasn't a clear path they um, they used to have a path on the top of the mountain that leads to the cave, but because it was raining as of then, the bushes had grown very tall, I must say, and I was told that there were all sort of animals located on top over there in the cave and in the bushes over there. This got me a bit scared, but since I had him leading me and it's his job, he knows what he's about, it was, you know, a bit easier. I was following him. So it, um, the rules was... Um, I have to step exactly where he steps. I shouldn't go a different path. I have to follow him. And I was trying as much as possible to do that. Now, when we got to the top, we got a bit lost. And this is very interesting. This actually happens whenever you find yourself in the jungle, like in the forest. Um, it's, there's no clear road that leads to the place. You have to go through certain parts of the mountains to be able to get it. And since it's a mountainous area, you have rocks at certain parts where you, which you can't climb, so you have to go around it to be able to get to the place. So um, we got a bit lost up there, but we were able to find our way through to the um, cave area. In the bush, I must say that there were all sort of animals passing, but I was just trying as much as possible to calm myself down, not you know freak out, and then you know I have I don't know. So one of the animals that I actually did smell was a snake. Uh, initially, the guy didn't want to tell me. We both had something passing by in the, uh, the bush, but he didn't want me. He was trying to prevent me from freaking out. So um, he said it was, I think, uh, some rats, some kind of rats or so. But I could smell that it was a snake. So I told him it was a snake. And as I told him, he was a bit surprised. As you know, I, you know, I could smell or I had some sort of you know, education about these sort of animals and the rest. So um, he cautioned me to come to where he was. And then, you know, most of the time, these animals wouldn't attack you if you don't seem to look like um, sort of um, a, a threat to them. So we managed to move past that part and we kept, you know, climbing to the top of the mountain towards where the cave was. So we did actually get to the cave, but we had some stops. And the water we carried with us, we carried two bottles of water. He had his, I had my. Um, for, unfortunately for him, he drank all his water. So I, had even, I hadn't even had a sip. 
because I know how some of these things are, especially I've been on you know trips like this, especially working on top of mountains and the rest, I decide not to drink so much. I just take some you know small small sips. So he had finished his water, so I had to actually give him some of my water. And this is when we were heading to the place, not even returning. So after my first sip, I didn't sip the water anymore. Uh, he took a bit of mine, so he did some small small sip, and since we were running out of water, now we walked. Um, for some you know minutes more and then we got to where the cave was now i must say that it was very dangerous because the mountains was very steep and it was full of animals now the good thing uh, most of the time in the forest is that during the daytime you don't tend to find most animals coming out so animals are most active in the night because that is when activities cease and they come to you know um, fetch for food and and so on so that was sort of a good thing. So we didn't really encounter so much animals, but we actually heard sounds of um, other sort of animals in the bush and the rest. And we're going through bushes which were taller than myself. Yes, I'm about close to six feet or even more tall. And yeah, we we're going through bushes like that. So it wasn't really clear, but yeah, we were on a mission and he actually gave me a sort of, you know, motivation and he led me. So we were actually um, on this mission. So we went all the way through to the cave and I got to a point where I realized I couldn't go anymore because that place was very steep and it was scary and the rope that they had tied to some metals they had over there was bent I don't know how that happened so it was very difficult especially for me so at that point I told him I wasn't going to go to the cave like yeah Sometimes whenever your conscience, you have some sort of, uh, your conscience is telling you something, you should be able to try as much as possible to um, follow it. So I actually did that. I did stick to my conscience. Like I wasn't ready for that. So I didn't, I didn't, couldn't risk my life just because of a drone, which I can always, you know, purchase, you know. So I, I made him understand that it wasn't really worth it. We don't have to go sacrifice our lives because of, a drone he still didn't want tell me to you know give up so he told me i should stay there so i was looking straight down it was very scary and i should say i was about more than 100 meters above like i don't know how to um, classify this but it was very high maybe in feet i don't know but it was very high 100 meters is even small i should say because this is a very high mountain on top and yeah it looked very slopey steep like any kind of description you could give to it it was very scary at that point so i decided to hang on to a tree which was you know at the edge so i let's sit close by the tree i actually took um a video with my phone at a as a then so you actually see that on your screen so this is actually me on top of the mountain. It is very, very, very um, steep over here. And if you look down, you can see that it's, it's uh, like that's a town over there called Quay. So I've lost my drone and we tried locating it. Looks like it's falling somewhere. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you're trying to find it, but hey, it's okay. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of work and checking like about two hours on the mountain. There's actually a valley over here. Can some... hear the animal back right now? Come again? Can you hear an animal back here? Yeah, I, th I thought I had. Hey. Yes. What more is that? That's a bush box. Oh, okay. I see. So, there's someone said stabbing me here. So, all right, this is how I lost my drone. <laughs> I was trying as much as possible not to take a lot of videos with my phone because that was the only thing I had with me and that was the only point or trace or contact uh, to the drone. So I was trying my possible best to keep it very safe so it doesn't fall, it doesn't go missing. Like I was trying my possible best. So I, um, you know, I, as we kept walking, I was using the phones, um, you know, that uh, the map as well as the control of the drone. I was having both of them, so I was trying to use that to look it. Now, one good thing I noticed about the DJI, especially with the Mavic Air 2 drone, is that when you're not flying, the battery is able to last for about an entire hour. So when we 
walked to the top um, of the mountain. We, at a certain point, we had some reception to the drone. We actually um, was, you know, with a drone, when you use the find me feature, you're able to turn on a beep as well as light. So in case you are closer, it makes it easier to locate it. Unfortunately, we were very far from the drone, I should say. We didn't know. And the drone points to certain location. That's the crazy thing about it. On top of the mountain, there was no nothing like a straight location. It doesn't give you accurate um, distance from where you are from the drone. That's um, like some sort of um, a disadvantage. I wish maybe that is going to be improved in future versions of drones which we are going to have so that it makes it easier. And as you work closer, it makes it easier. Now you have an option to use a different map if you want to. So there's Google map alternative available but because it was in the forest um google map doesn't have any routes in the forest so it doesn't give you anything so we had to still use the default map provided um on the dji mavic air 2 drone so we kept working like yeah so yeah we had gotten to where the cave was and i stopped over there he went a bit down there to see if he could locate it but he went and um he didn't find anything so he got back i told him we just have to return back. So at this time, we decided to return back. And also, we got lost up there again because um, after walking through the bushes, we we're just two people. We weren't able to create like some sort of path enough to be able to make a vessel boat for us to be able to trace it back to the ground. So it took us about an hour or more and um, we kept walking. We had to rest at a certain point. We had run out of water. And then finally, we got to a point which we we're able to um, locate our way back down. Now, one advice I will actually give based on my experience is that whenever you happen to be working, especially in the jungle, maybe it's like a, a situation similar to mine, you have to try as much as possible to do some markings, which will make it easier for you to be able to locate your way back whenever you are trying to find your way back. So. There were some trees which had some mark on it, which that was what actually um, helped us when we were coming back down. So as dangerous as it was when we were going, it was the same thing when we were coming back. All sort of animals in the bush, taller bush, um, yeah, and um, rocks at certain points, you know, and the rest. It was, we had to still be very, very careful. And unfortunately, the unfortunate um, happened, which was, the guard did cut his palm and this was caused by a slippery rock yeah and it was it was very much unfortunate at that point um, because we were just a few meters away from the top heading down there and because we couldn't find any clear path he slipped he was in front of me so he was leading his slip and he tri um, he fell his hand went against the um, rock then cut that was very intense you see a picture of it uh, viewers discretion is advice and it was very much intense so at that point i had with me um a face mask you know we needed to you know apply some sort of face aid at that point i had with me face mask so i um helped him use the face mask to wipe off the blood and then um, i tied the face mask against the um the cut so it doesn't get any sort of infection and the rest and then i had to this time around lead the way and assisted him through to the bottom so he was actually showing me the uh, places i should pass and the rest and um, we got fortunately we were able to get to the base of the mountain and there's this actually a video we both made together after that so you can watch it on the screen so we finally actually made it to the base of the mountain. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the drone. I must say, it was such a, an adventure. Climbing and descending this mountain was, was something else. But you know, it was, I think we stood for something, even though we couldn't win. But hey, life still goes on from there. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. my tour guide for spending the time he actually got hit just not because of me but i really appreciate him so much for the time and then um he taken up to himself for us to you know go all the way up there i don't know how many feet we climbed but it's quite a journey we spent about we climb 
1576. Wow. Wow. That's that's a lot. We spent almost close to like about almost four hours climbing and descending. Yeah, because it's yeah. bushy. <laughs> yeah, it's actually been raining, so yes. there's a lot of bush which made it a bit difficult to um you know identify the parts that normally um is you know treaded to that particular place. But at least I I've seen how amazing you know it could be you know it's a part of Ghana like standing up there looking down seeing other mountains and the reds it's it's crazy god is amazing i should say because you 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 wonder how all these things came to be in place so that's just about it for now uh see you in the next one so yeah unfortunately we couldn't find a drone and at that point i i think i did really enjoy the trip up there to the mountain that's crazy i was even thinking about the drone anymore. i was actually thinking about my life when i was up there seriously i was no longer thinking about the drone now when we got back down i thought about the entire experience going up there coming back down and the rest and it was so much like an adventure i'd not embark i have embarked on trips which are close to that but this wasn't planned and yeah so i was actually thinking about it. so i'd forgotten about the drone and uh, yeah so i wasn't really worried so much and yeah so we went to inform the chief that this is what had happened and he was very much disappointed this had happened so um at this point we decided to take a very good look at the footage again so after watching the video realized that we're not anywhere close to the the cave seriously i was like come on like so now we try to tra trace where the path that I identified over there. So good enough, the um, chief had an idea about that path. He directed us to the path and then he actually had someone take us there. So this was like a second mission going to look for the drone. So I was a bit hopeful at this point because um, this time around, um, after some so many hours, the battery of the drone had died. So I wasn't getting any reception. So I was just relying on the map information from uh, my phone. That was the last point of you know flight or where it fell. So that was what I was relying on. So I still had a straight line which was leading to that particular place. And we just, we went a bit ahead and then we actually identified a path. So that was a, some sign of some sign of um, relief to me. Now I was trying to identify the trees. So I was trying to you know map out the trees which um, was. Uh, I saw in the footage there and I did it. I was able to identify some but I went a bit um, some distance away from the path so then we needed to go towards our right hand side that was like about should I say like about two o'clock I should say so that was like at that point that's the direction at which we were supposed to be walking towards and I should say it was in a jungle now my guard who was Head, he still had like he 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 he's amazing I should say he gave me some sort of motivation like courage and the rest to still go look for this drone at that point I was a bit hopeful but we went we searched a bit and we couldn't find it it was at this point I got a bit depressed because at first I wasn't really thinking so much about it and um, yeah so we had to leave the place it was getting a bit into the night so we left and i went back to the village where i was actually lodging um yeah yeah I, I decided to just forget about thoughts of the drone so i i didn't have to go much crazy about it and so i i tried my puzzle best and i calmed myself down and yeah i didn't forget about it so um back in the village what i was praying for was that there shouldn't be rains because I, st I was still hopeful we were going to find it. So um, we we're going to do this the next day to, uh, you know, try our possible best to see if we could find it. So after this had happened, when the guard got back to the office, he had report he reported it to his, um, you know, superiors. And then um, they were also a bit disappointed. I from, you know, come all the way to their place to be able to film and then share it to the entire world, their place. So they were so much willing to assist or help me find the drone and that gave me some sort of renewed like uh you know should i say uh, zero i was very much excited about that but that was going to happen the next day so that particular night all my prayer was it shouldn't rain 
and yeah so that was how i actually did lose my drone now I'm, this video has been a bit lengthy so i'm going to cut this short In the next video i'm going to share with you how the second day um that was the uh, should i say another adventure which was you know to locate or find a drone also went and for that one i actually had my camera with me so i did actually take some footage so you actually get to see how that also um did go so now some piece of advice to all beginners especially who are learning to fly drones is that whenever you want to fly you have to try your possible best to fly in an open space yeah and don't go so much far away from where you are so you can't see the drone it then makes it a bit difficult on how you can rec uh, return back because the controls is not as um, simple especially when you're learning to fly you need to practice for a continuous time before you get used to it and then also um, try as much as possible not to fly close to any um, object so the Mavic Air 2 drone has sensors at the back and front as well as at the base. It doesn't have um, any sensors to the sides and as well as to the top. What happened was I was flying sideways and that was what um, you know brought about the crash and then the drone falling down. So there's, um, there's, there's more I'm going to share in my next video but this is just about it for now i did embark on an adventure i never planned on just because i ended up like like i i lost my drone in the process so yeah it's like i don't know but that's just about it for this video in case you are new to this channel kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button and i don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime there's a new video you get to see it my name is Ishmael thank you very much for watching i'll see you in the next one